is never heard. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. The next poem is called On Honor Defeats On Pressure. So it's, it's a way of defeating pressure. If you are under pressure, pressurize yourself with a different pressure. And you will see that by the end of the season, you leave to measure the results of your own pressure. Than to be measured and being defeated by an uninvited pressure. Pressure rise, pressure, pressure rise, pressure, pressure rise, pressure, boom, out of past, it will. Left stronger you will be after inhaling the defeated cries of pressure and definitely your own pressure will kneel down before your own great honor. Thank you. So the next poem is called Baton Sticks and Helmets. So I come from Zimbabwe. A lot of people, they know Zimbabwe because of Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Some, they don't know him. So, <clears throat> there was a time, Zimbabweans, we reckoned, very inter we reckoned intellectuals in Africa for a very long time. It was nearly everyone speaks English and some of the other African countries like South Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, they laugh at us, they say, we were too colonized because we slightly like the British. So, yeah, that's what we are, but we like what we are. And we, wherever we go, most of the times people, they just like us. It's easy for us to adjust to different things. So there was this guy, um, the problem about us Zimbabweans is we are, we are intellectuals, but we don't have solutions to our own problems. I don't know why. So there's this guy who is called uh, Ivan Mawari. A, a time when Robert Mugabe was the president and people were not getting solutions to, the, to our situations, but he, he inspired us. He said, we are not second class citizens. You have to embrace your flag. You have to be with your flag. Get your flag and let's go to the state house and march and say we, 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 we want a development in Zimbabwe. So I was there during the day I, I studied the whole day and I wrote this poem. It's called Baton Sticks and Helmets. A man of big stomach will not vomit his food because the skinny one is complaining of hunger. Some will reach a lifetime achievement of smoking their pain away. Some will reach a lifetime achievement of drinking their pain away all the days of their lives. One amazing singer who had golden fingers on his guitar was asked to choose either to lose his tongue or his hand. And as such, we have stayed with such and beyond for a very long time. And no one wants to be on the front line to a shortened destiny perpetuated by bravery, reckoned irrelevant to the system and systematics. Some will continue to sit on those bridges until the shape of their buttocks start to show on their head tops. Some will continue to weep in those blankets of fear until time is no more respecting wishes and hopes. Education has proven to be a personal asset attracting less vulnerabilities than a societal pride measured by societal development. Handcuffs opening teeth to all average and not learned on a daily basis. And jails and arms open to all those who have been systematically painted black. Those who have tried to carry societal burdens as if it's their own. And of course those who first kill themselves before their final death. Once upon a time, people lived in togetherness and oneness. But today, be careful of the face that you see. It might be your last. It's become the character and personality of many as they prefer to watch most from the terraces. Not only this has it become a one-point norm, but an all around the globe war between the stomach man and the skinny one. Speech has been reduced to button sticks and helmets. Only people thereafter retaining to their different social classes, enforcing themselves to forget all and leave a chance to live more. For a man of big stomach will not vomit his food 
because the skinny one is complaining of hunger. For a man of big stomach will not vomit his food because the skinny one is complaining of hunger. Until the big stomachs disappear, shall we continue to be skinny? And until the skinny disappear, shall our stomachs grow bigger? And until when shall we continue to live this life becomes our daily free study of life and death. Thank you. So the next poem is called um, It's called Stomach Police. <laughs> Enjoy. I am in a foreign land where everything is foreign. The food I eat is foreign. I failed to figure out its taste. No wonder why I am always chewing a bubble gum. My way of satisfying my appetite for chewing good food. Why am I here? I had no option but to be here. They call it a champion's medal. Win a race and get one. Indeed, the race was scary. I wonder what happened to my competitors if they survived to the land of the living or they became food to the hungry rubbish bins. From the way I see it, the war is not yet over until it's over. Kick out and kick out I will. I kick out and kick out I will until I am out of this foreign land, a land without sweet birds to sing morning melodies but just hungry snacks always fighting for food, an industry of digestion where eating is a compulsory subject of the matter. Wait until I am born. I will not eat anything until I have fully digested everything they forced in me. Kick I will kick, kick I will kick until I am out of this foreign land. Thank you. And my last poem is called The Longest Dream. I met her in a dream. Sleeping took me quick, and I saw myself dreaming. Indeed, it was a dream come true. A dream that gave birth to reality. Reality that disappeared quickly like a dream. This dream left me daydreaming of what I could have done to keep her for me. She was a lioness, the best hunter I've ever seen with my own eyes. She would charge for a catch and we would always dine with the best. As she taught me how to hunt for the best, I wish I could hug her ever in my arms and never to let her go to the unretaining. Maybe if I'd given her cups, she silently admired. Maybe she was going to stay. Stay away from those I believe they can't love her more than I did, although I failed to show it. Now I'm just a lion without pride. In and the jungle is becoming too big for my role. My role is now becoming imitated by wild dogs. Last time I was given clips of a horseshoe by some zebras. And the other time some buffaloes wanted to hold out my heart out of my system. Now most of my time I spend it scratching wounds and chewing flies for <coughs> breakfast. Because I chose to be a lion with I chose to be a lion thinking that I was better than the jungle. Trying to call her by name whenever, wherever she is, hyenas laugh at me and imitate my voice, saying it is a voice of a faint spirit and a broken heart. Although one cat said to me, I don't mind an injured lion. And I told her, please cat stay away of my business. As I relive my memories, redesign them in pursuit of real-time scent of them, aging and aging without a real solution to this problem of mine that came as an outstanding star to my delight. I guess it is time now to wake up from this dream. Once I wake up, I will live to the fullest and never to dream, 
never to daydream again, lest the dream becomes an unending dream that ends up one's life without noticing it. Thank you.